The situation in the Middle East and North Northern Africa is likely to get worse before it gets better. What will yeah. your what will your policy be from trying to alleviate problems to becoming isolated from it? If leaders in the region request your help, will you refuse? And if not, in what ways will you help? I would help them by example, by getting off of the toxic fuel industries that now dominate the global energy system, the ones that Obama and Romney are pushing more fossil and nuclear fuels. That's what we're pushing worldwide. Uh, that's not how you solve problems. That creates much bigger problems than you, than you started with. So what we have to lead is by example. We have to show the rest of the world by example of how we modify our cars, how we modify our power plants, how we modify our entire system to not work on poison any longer. We're going to have organic poison-free food and fuel, and when we can prove that we can do it, we can then export those products worldwide forever, because that's the kind of business it is. It never runs out. That's the business we can be in. That's how we can have a, a prosperous okay. future in spite of what the climate change uh, catastrophes are coming, and they are coming, but we know how to get ready for them. We know how to build these biological lifeboat food production systems that can survive this but we're not doing it. We're mm -hmm. talking about nonsense in these presidential debates about the fact that government can't make any jobs. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's just ridiculous what we listen to. Okay. Uh, Santa? Well, I think instead of insinuating ourselves into other countries' uh, problems or problem resolution processes, unless we're invited to do it, um, I think we should pretty much stay out and set a different example through our State Department how we resolve problems, and we haven't been that good at it, in my opinion. So until we develop a really good process for resolving our differences with other countries, I think it's sort of arrogant um, and hypocritical for us to insinuate ourselves into the resolution process between other countries elsewhere. But the fact of the matter is we do send a lot of aid to the tune of billions of dollars to other countries. Yeah, most of which we have no idea where it went. The corrupt governments of other countries, the puppets that we put in office, that's who that aid goes to, not to the people. And, uh, you know, some of these requests are for humanitarian aid. Humanitarian aid is fine. Um, yeah, I think we have to make sure that the aid goes to where it's supposed to go, like Harry was saying, to the uh, end recipients, not to the people controlling the government to line their pockets. Okay. And yeah, let me tell you, the best, thing we could, the best thing we could do for those people is stop poisoning their air, poisoning their water, and poisoning their food with our pesticides and other poisons from our energy system. That's the best thing we could do to help hunger and people around the world is not poison them. But Judy, you're right as far as the foreign aid goes, as far as helping children, for example, with education programs and others so they can develop a sort of more benign um, regard to the United States through the years. I think that's helpful. It helps us. It helps them. But the difficulty, I think, is ensuring that foreign aid goes to where it's supposed to go yeah. and people are held accountable for dispersing it. Okay.